Hey y'all and welcome. This is Raina Johnson, owner of Tea's Accessory Boutique, and I am excited today to show you how to make these custom nameplate bamboo earrings. As promised, here is the tutorial finally. I'm sure there's another method to this madness, but here's mine and I'd like to share with you. Let's get started. Okay, to get started, I'm going to apply a generous amount of Mod Podge onto the backing or the first layer of my cardstock. I say generous because I used a textured cardstock, which is glitter. You may not need as much Mod Podge if you're using a flat, plain cardstock. Also, I pre cut all of my pieces on my Silhouette Cameo 2. If you don't have a cutting machine such as a Silhouette or a Cricut, you can always print out the letters and cut around them with scissors or an exacto knife. As you can see, all I am doing is applying layer on top of layer. This is my first layer. My T wasn't connected as stated, and I had to have a flat piece for it to go on top of so that all of my things could be connected as one once I apply it to the earring. Here you can see me just switching from working on the tray to working on some scrapbook paper. I find that it was easier to maneuver. The tray had a glare that I didn't like. And I am just going to repeat the same exact steps that I said previously. I am actually going to do this six times total so that my cardstock could be very sturdy. That is the number that works for me. Some people might find that five times or four times or three times or eight times will work for them. I found that six is my magic number. Be sure to press around all of the edges so that your cardstock sticks really well together. Even if Mod Podge oozes out around the sides, it's okay. Mod Podge dries completely clear, so it won't leave a mess. You can just kind of smooth it with your brush. But just make sure you're doing that because you want your cardstock to stick together and you want the glue to dry in between each layer so that it can be as sturdy as possible. Here, I'm just making sure that all of the cardstock is lined up properly so that it looks like one uniform piece and not a bunch of little pieces of cardstock. And then I'm going to continue to layer on top of layer. Okay, so I've already added all six layers to my back pieces and it's really thick already. I'm happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and start layering the blue pieces that actually make the earring pop and actually allow you to read what the name is. So in order to do that, I'm just going to continue to do the steps that I've been doing applying Mod Podge, making sure to get into all of the curves of the cutout and just generously put it on there and then add my blue pieces.
as you can see I've already done my first layer of blue glitter letters and now I'm about to apply my second layer of blue glitter letters which will actually be my last layer because I had all intentions of using six layers but once I got into it I realized I didn't need all of the blue glitter letters because I've already used six layers of the backing if you want your earrings to be thicker, then by all means, use as many layers as you like, but I found that this method worked best for me. Okay, so once I've applied the last layer of blue glitter letters, I'm going to coat the entire piece once again generously with Mod Podge. If I were using plain cardstock, I would probably coat the piece two or three times before applying my layer of epoxy later. But since this is glittered, I don't think I need to coat it more than one time. I think it will hold up pretty well. Now that the piece is completely coated, we're just going to sit it aside and let it dry. Once it's all dry, it's time for epoxy. Now I pre-mix my epoxy, but the directions on the boxes are very easy to follow and you can do this very easily. You really only need the bare minimum amount. Luckily I had another project that I had to do where I needed epoxy. So I just used it for those projects and then took the scraps that were left in the cup to paint the piece all over. I'm not wearing any gloves here, but if you're not familiar with epoxy or used to working with it or know the effects of it on your skin, please put gloves on because if it gets on your skin, it can be irritating. And if it gets on your skin, just be sure to head to the nearest sink and wash it off immediately. I'm doing the same exact thing that I've been doing the entire time, just with epoxy. I'm going to paint it all over the piece in all of the curves, making sure that I hit each layer on the sides and tops and bottoms.
Okay, so now that it's completely covered with epoxy, I'm just going to carefully, carefully pick it up without touching the top of it and put it to the side so that it can dry. It usually takes about 24 hours to properly cure. And once that's done, you'll be ready for your next step. For the sake of getting this video up, I did not wait for the earring to dry, but the instructions for the E6000 are pretty cut and dry. All you have to do is pick points on your earring where the medallion will be touching, apply glue to those points, set the medallion on it, and let that glue cure for another 24 hours. And there you have it, your custom nameplate bamboo earrings. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I would love to see the pairs that you all make. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel, Raina Taboo. Make sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Tease Accessory Boutique. Thank you.